On this week's episode, we discuss John Foley's departure from the company, as well as other management changes, and Peloton announces their Latinx Heritage Month. As well as the rumored cost of the Peloton Row and the three new coaches that are being teased, and much, much more. Welcome to Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. Here are your hosts, Amanda Siegel and John Pruitt. Welcome to episode 99 of Pedo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. I'm Amanda Siegel and I am joined by, by my co host, John Pruitt. Hey, John. Episode 99. <laughs> I left that all for you. <laughs> That is insane! Ninety nine episodes. Um, yeah, big one next week. We'll have to we'll have to bring out all the uh, trumpets and uh, hoopla for the, our century. The one hundred ju- the, the jubilee celebration of a hundred Pillow Buddy right. episodes. <laughs> right, right. So, um, how you doing? Good, good. Doing well. It's been it's been a good week. Full week of school for you know for Jackson for the Red Menace. And um, yeah, kind of, kind of took it, taking it easy this week uh, in terms of working out. So I haven't, haven't yeah, me too. been too crazy with it. I um, I got back to Maryland um, from Florida, so I um, have been here. And and um, for those of you that follow me on social, you've seen that I traded in that beauty and um, got my. Recall refund back and and succumbed to the regular tread and the verdict is still out. I uh, will leave it at that. I I miss my beautiful big tread plus, but I um, hopefully will get used to the um, I call her uh, pretty and petite. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what she's been. That's what she's been named. Um, so so yeah, you know what? For what I'm doing, it's it's probably fine. I was just you know very fortunate and spoiled to have had the um, plus, but I need to get used to the um, the regular. And I guess we'll see what um, where we go from there. But yeah, it was a pretty not much not much working out was done. Um, unfortunately, just kind of threw in you know a couple of things here and there just to keep my body moving. But um, yeah, yeah, good week. All right, folks. Well, before we get started with the news, we do like to remind you of how you can keep up to date with all of our episodes across all of our platforms. Every episode is released on our YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand side of the video and hit the notify button so that you never miss an episode. Yep. And if you want to listen to us, we are also on all traditional podcast platforms. So you search Pello Buddy TV, hit subscribe, and also the notification so you never miss an episode. And please leave us a review. We love reading some of the positive reviews that we receive. And we also love the feedback of ways we can, you know, revamp the show and incorporate some changes that um, that streamline it a little more. So uh, always appreciate hearing from you uh, about how we're doing. Absolutely. And of course, we are, as you all know, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and I believe TikTok. <laughs> so just search for Pello Buddy and like, follow us on all of those platforms for all of the latest news. And now, John, let's get on with the show. First, let's do a rundown of the latest Pello news. All right. So kicking it off with some uh, rather sad news, I would say, but uh, the the OG uh, founder, co-founder of Peloton, John Foley, um, on Monday the 12th, Peloton announced that uh, he, his immediate resignation, um, as well as the resignation of Chief Legal Officer uh, Hasayo Kushi, which is effective October 3rd. Um, Foley, you know, he was one of the Peloton's co-founders in 2012 and was the company CEO until this past year in February when he stepped down and transitioned to to the position of executive chair when Barry McCarthy took over as CEO. Um, And then at the same time, back in February, Peloton announced 
major restructuring plans in an effort to reduce costs and drive up profits. Um, taking Foley's, John Foley's spot as executive chair will be Karen Boone, who is a Peloton board member since 2019 and has served as the company's lead independent director since October of 2021. Um, Karen Boone arrived at Peloton from Restoration Hardware, where she served as the president as well as uh, chief financial and administrative officer. Um, and then taking Kushi's place, hopefully I'm pronouncing this right, uh, hopefully I'm not butchering his name too much there, but taking his place at Peloton is Tammy Albaran, who will be joining the company from Uber Technologies, um, where she served as Chief Deputy General Chief Deputy General Counsel as well as Deputy Corporate Secretary. Um, Peloton also shared this news on LinkedIn, uh, which included sorry, I gotta, included the fact that Kevin Cornells, the company's Chief Commercial Officer, will also be departing. Um, unlike Foley and Cushy. Cornell's position at the company is not being filled upon his exit, but rather being absorbed by another Peloton executive, according to CNBC. Um, Cornell's, he had been with Peloton since 2018, and his time with the company will come to an end on the 23rd of this month. Um, he oversaw Peloton's international rollout, ex successfully aided the company in expanding to the UK, to Canada, to Germany, as well as uh, most recently to Australia. Uh, so just seems like, you know, they're really trimming, I guess, trimming the fat, so to speak, um, in an effort to, I guess, take out some of those high, you know, those high salary positions. But um, I don't think this comes as a big shock. I mean, it's been pretty quiet since John Foley stepped down. I mean, I, I haven't really heard anything from him. So, I mean, who knows how much, um, how much he has been like actively in the office since, right. uh, since February. So. Right. And there were definitely two, there were definitely two takes on whether he, you know, kind of just stepped down or whether he, you know, resigned, you know, it was more, whether it was more dramatic or less. Yeah. Um, Jill Foley did, put up a beautiful post on her Facebook and Instagram, you know, complimenting him and acknowledging the path that they've been down and, and looking forward to the new ventures. And there were some lovely comments. I mean, I read through some of the comments of what folks had said. Uh, certainly for us, Peloton diehards, we're very grateful to him to have having started the company and where it is today. And it's sad. It's, you know, it's sad to see it's somebody that has was so passionate about what they did you know, I know uh, this is his his baby. You know, it's got to be. Yeah, it's got to yeah, be tough. Yeah. So it it was interesting. It was interesting to see, and it was sad. I'm sure that for folks like Jen Sherman and Robin Arzan, and you know those that were there from the beginning, from the early, that yeah, too must have been, a, you know, definitely a little sad. So I guess time will tell what his next venture or next steps will be, but certainly from. Me and I'm sure you, we're very grateful that he had this brainchild and developed such an incredible company. And it's just sad how things just manifested. And I do blame it all to, to Corona. I think that if it hadn't, you know, exploded the way that it had back in 2020, it would have been a very different company today. You know, I think it yeah. gave them a springboard that they went for, but um, unfortunately didn't end up manifesting in the way that they had hoped is my in in interpretation of it. So That's fair. Yeah. I do, yeah. I do know on Jen Sherman's, on her 60 minute classic rock ride back on September, last Sunday, September 11th, I was on the, I follow Jill Foley on the leaderboard. She's just Jill F, I think is her leaderboard name, but Jen shouted her out. And she did say how much she miss, uh, how much she misses him and John. So that leads me to believe maybe they're just not in in the office as much, or yeah. you know they don't have much of a pre presence there. Um, obviously, more so now. But I yeah, get. you know, when you step down and, and you have somebody else filling in those shoes, there's no question that you don't want to. You know, even staying on board, you don't want to feel like you're that that person is in your shadow. Um, so I understand why he, you know, went to the side and, and gave Barry McCarthy that opportunity to 
do what he needed to do to continue to make. Because I guess he, you know, look, I'm sure that John wanted the company to continue to succeed. He had money, he invested in it, you know, and he certainly didn't want to see the company continue to just spiral out of control. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it would be interesting to get uh, to get our friend David Miller on the show and get to hear David's perspective on what he thinks um, this, you know, this whole this whole thing is. I, I, it's something I should, would love to would love to be able to do. So, Chris and I should talk about that and see whether we get David on and what he has to say. Because I think he has a pretty good insight into you know the backside of, of the business aspect of it. Mm. All right. Well, moving on, moving on. We um, we think we finally have a price on the Peloton Row. There is definitely rumors out there, um, and it's certainly not a bargain. And I hope we're I hope we're I hope we're actually wrong about this price. I'll just say. I am praying. <laughs> not only hope, I am praying that we are wrong, John. Um, yeah. I, I mean, this past week. We said Pelabadi did receive some information uh, which indicated that the much anticipated Peloton Row, uh, known as Peloton Row, will cost a whopping $3,195 in the US. We are still unclear what the cost will be in other markets. And we've also noticed that the US website is currently the only market that mentions the ROA. So the Australian, German, Canadian, and UK websites have not yet had splash pages teasing the ROA, uh, which of course has led to questions around if or when the Peloton row might launch in other markets. But I don't know if folks have actually noticed that, but the US you know, is um, the only one that is tending to advertise and market it at, the, at this time. Um, for those of you that remember, the Peloton Tread was released across different markets over a course of several different months, and Australia still doesn't have access to the Tread. So, you know, are they going to do the same with the rower? I guess we'll have to see what happens when, when release actually happens. I don't think so. From what I'm hearing out of the UK market, they're definitely learning about it. They definitely know it's coming. Uh, I, I would be shocked if I don't see it being released in the UK. Um, now, as far as the price point goes, this price point would actually make it the second most expensive product, with the tread being the highest um, after the increase last month to three thousand four hundred and ninety-five. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for most folks, it really has hit hard um, that it is significantly more expensive than the hydro, um, the hydro row, which we know is a competitor for Peloton. Um, so the original Hydro um, retails at $2,495, so $700 less than what Peloton is rumored to be offering. Um, and the Wave, which is their newest and lower cost rower, retails at $1,495. Mm. So, you know, what's what are they trying to do? I mean, I know that he... Barry McCarthy in, you know, in the quarter earnings did say that it was going to be expensive. He did say that he wanted to have a premium product on the market in all his hardware. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's just going to be something that we're going to have to wait and see. I'm sure it's going to be a fluctuating price, uh, you know, price tag. That'll probably be launched at something, decreased at, you know, holiday side, maybe increased again. But it's, it's a, it's a, high number right I mean, yeah that's and and i said i i thought i i threw out there i thought it was going to be between 2500 and 3000 yeah, um mm. i i figured 3000 would be kind of the the sweet spot but now with the recent change for financing you know with a firm for um us members and uh i forget who else canada uses a firm also but with only 0% for the 12 month that's going to be 12 you know fat payments um, if you finance that, so yeah, and and, and looking at the comments uh, from Pelo Buddy's post, it seemed like people were, were too pleased. We're not um, happy. We're not happy. Yeah. So maybe it'll be a slow release. Um, you know, maybe maybe they're just not going to produce that many. Um, it may be one of those. You know, I I have a feeling that it's going to be one of these luxury items, like when the, you know, when the iPhone first comes out and everyone grapples to get it and then you have to wait forever if, you, if you're not in that, you know, that first launch. 
Um, maybe that's going to be something that's going to happen. I guess we'll just have to wait um, and see. And I guess with all the rumors, um, you know, of this imminent release of the row, um, Peloton has been teasing three new uh, instructors or coaches on social media this past week also. So their recent Instagram post is captured with three rowing um, emojis or, and, or, or kind of pictures and contains three vibrantly colored images of individuals on the Peloton row with no faces shown. With most of their uh, head cut off. You can see a little, right? you can see a little right. like the bottom part of their chin and then it's cut off. But that's it. Yeah. But that's it. So, uh, and the images say, meet your crew. Um, you know, it was kind of was meet your crew on the three different images. But we've already hinted to you folks, and those of you that watch the show regularly uh, or listen to the show um, know that we have a pretty good feeling who two of them are, Olympian rower Alex um, Kowalski, as well as former Barry's Bootcamp instructor Katie Wong. But now we have even more suspicion of who the third instructor appears to be, and that is Ashley Pryor, a former coach with um, Row House, which is a boutique rowing fitness studio. Um, Ashley's also the founder of Relentless Rowing Academy, um, a non-for-profit organization, which is focused on breaking down barriers for BIPOC and para athletes in the sport of rowing through education, financial support, and mentorship. So she would be a an incredible asset to the rowing team. Mm. And yes, if in fact it is announced that Ashley makes up the third new rowing coach, we of course could say heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we know, we know, so, we know. Peloton knows that we know. <laughs> Peloton knows that we know. So sorry, Peloton, but um, there've been there's been great. I mean, when when Chris posted about this this past week, there was you know great chatter about it. Um, Ashley, I think she goes by Ash. And we're not sure what she'll end up being called, but she definitely has a following. People know who she is. Uh, she's, you know, one of the comments was she's not your average, you know, your average Peloton instructor in, in her, you know, plus size, in her um, size two, you know, frame. Mm -hmm. um, she's just one of everybody else. So, and uh, Nick Kurwoski, so Nick Kurwoski, his brother is a current hydro instructor. Because someone was chiming in, a, a hydro member chimed in how much they love his brother. So, I don't think the apple falls far from the tree in terms of uh, appeal there. So, Right, 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 right. Um, and then lastly, in addition to the three new instructors, we are pretty confident that there are going to be existing Peloton instructors who will also be on the roster um, and part of the team. We reported previously um, that we expected Matt Wilpers um, as one of them, as well, of course, Adrian Williams, who has been featured in in pretty much all the announcements and um, the video that was released and the website launch. Yep. So that will be any day now, and we'll have a good, a, a better idea as to who is actually going to be the row team. I would love to see Cody on on the rower. I know he's been very adamant about not wanting to run, but it would be great to see him on an additional modality. And I think rowing. I think he could he could step into that and. He could handle that. So there are definitely tons of contenders. And we've yeah, talked yeah. about it before. Marcel, you know, Marcel certainly was one. Jocelyn Thompson Rule in the UK had you know been a, a professional or a, she had some uh, rowing background. Sure, but she definitely had but had rowing background. Yep. So it'll be interesting to see how they move around. Yeah. It sounds like it, I Maybe next week, hopefully we actually get, you know, hopefully they stop teasing us and dangling this little carrot and we actually, you know, get some official deets finally. I feel like we've gotten very minimal info so far. I'm looking at next Wednesday, September 21st. It's a very special That's day. That's very and specific. Happy birthday. Ah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
and that'll be a fantastic birthday present uh, with my refund from my Trade Plus recall. And uh, um, it'll be a, a great way of celebrating my birthday. So yeah, Patatana, if you're listening next Wednesday, it would be a fabulous day for you to release it. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. So we'll wait and see. All yes. right. Well, moving on, we have the auto eye uh, incline feature has been added to the tread. So Peloton is apparently rolling out this new auto incline feature uh, for the Peloton tread, not the plus. Uh, but in case you missed our previous posting about it, Peloton began beta testing an auto incline feature last month. Sorry, the dog's barking. When enabled, this feature automatically adjusts the tread's incline based on the instructor's cues. So similar to the way the Bike Plus automatically adjusts the rider's resistance to match what the instructor calls out when using that auto resistance feature. Um, so there's now a new support page, which we have linked on PeloBuddy.com with this article that's written up about it. Um, is now available containing additional details about the auto incline feature for the tread, which states it is now available for all Peloton tread members. Um, and then how do you activate it? So you'll see a, a, a little lock button next to the incline target metric on your screen. Now keep in mind, this is for only on demand classes. It's not for live classes. Same thing with the bike plus. Uh, but you can turn the feature on or off by pressing that little lock icon. And then turning it on will allow you to complete the run within the instructor's target incline range without having to adjust the incline yourself. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's only for on demand. And um, I don't know, I, I guess, you, you know, with the tread now, I guess you can look forward to having that feature, Amanda. <laughs> feature and it's actually kind of cool. I did. I just um, last week used the feature um, and it, it's, you know, it's a great way as you do. I, I like to use the auto, the auto feature on, you know, on the bike plus on the um, mm -hmm. bike. So I often will use it on demand if I'm doing, you know, a climb or I'm doing something that has a ton of resistance. So I did the same with the tray and it works great. It works great. It actually is interesting though, because it does, it actually pushes it to a 0.5. So if the, if the instructor says your resistance is what between what, you know, 2%, it actually gives you the range of one and a half to two and a half um, that you'd be able to, to do it in. So you ah. can actually go up half a percent. But I did like it. I liked the fact that it was there. It worked beautifully. I was impressed with it. So yeah, I did use it. That's nice. Just so maybe you can go to maybe maybe you can go to fifteen percent. <laughs> I was just saying I can still out. I, I was just saying I can still out incline your ass any day now. <laughs> you can you can still you can still do it. Push that is no question. <laughs> All right. Um, so a small but what seems to be useful feature has been added to Peloton Lane Break users. Uh, sorry, to Peloton Lane Break. So users can now filter the available lane break options by length played versus not played and number of stars received. So when Lane Break first was released, you would just see a list of the different levels. But since um, but since there, there were relatively low numbers back then, it was kind of easy to find what you, you know, what you were looking for. But the catalog has expanded significantly, certainly with the All for One Music Festival. It became a lot harder for folks to be able to sort and figure out what they wanted to do. So that is a new feature that's been added, and I'm sure Lane Break users will be very pleased that they have that ability to now um, sort through what they're looking for. Nice. Well, in the in the Rumorville uh, area department, is Alex Toussaint going to teach tread classes? So Peloton has dropped multiple hints this past Tuesday that Alex would uh, might be added to the tread roster. So that morning, the, in the latest edition of our Future Cell series that features Ashton Kutcher um, and Chris Paul. Uh, who's, I don't know if he's a famous athlete, Chris Paul, I think. Um, I don't know what his background is. Sure. I haven't done that. I haven't done that class yet. I haven't either. But Alex was the instructor in that running class, running alongside uh, both of them. And 
eyes, ah, basketball player. Thank you, control room. Um, we already know that some of the non-tread uh, instructors would be featured in the series, including Emma, Dennis, um, as well as AT. Um, and this was revealed when the series was first announced recently. However, numerous signs point to a more official role for Alex on the tread. So first, Peloton posted a now deleted Instagram comment saying, oh, and P.S., at Alex Tucson is a tread instructor now uh, when discussing this, this new class drop. Um, they deleted the comment you know, shortly thereafter and then claimed it was simply wishful thinking. However, Alex himself, and he's posted a couple, you know, running on different treadmills, not just Peloton treads, but like at a gym um, in the past. But he posted a video to Instagram a couple weeks ago uh, showing him running on his own tread in his home. And the post was quickly filled with comments, you know, obviously, you know, wanting him to teach tread classes. And he never pushed back, though. You know, he never said, you know, he never dispelled any rumors, um, you know, from the, the flurry of comments that it was generating. Um, unlike other instructors who Cody Rigsby has been very adamant about he will not teach on the tread. He hates running, even though he likes to go running every now and then in, with Brook in Brooklyn with Camilla. Um, but he's also dispelled any rumors when people, you know, comment or say anything. Uh, but the strongest evidence... Yeah. The strongest evidence comes from Peloton's official instructor page, which now has both the bike and tread listed next to Alex's name and picture there. You know, it makes sense, John. Think about it. We're going to lose three tread instructors in the next couple of weeks, months. With oh, with maternity Vince, leave. Yeah. King Good point. And Selena all going off on maternity yep. leave. That's three pretty active tread coaches that are not going to be, you know, certainly at least three months, they're going to be off the schedule. So it would make sense to bring on, you know, new, not have to hire new instructors, but bring on what they have yeah. um, and move things around. So I wouldn't be surprised. It makes, certainly it makes sense. I mean, though the, they're all probably within the next couple months will be out and pretty, pretty, you know, next to each other, you know, one after the other. So yeah, I mean it does make sense. Well, so I personally I personally am very excited if, if it if it does does come true because no one makes me work harder than Alex on the bike. I always have the biggest outputs with him. My only concern is he would probably kill me on the tread because I wouldn't, you know, want to, you know, dole it back. Kind of yeah, I'm gonna go balls out on the tread yeah. and obviously um I, I'm not as strong of an athlete on the tread as I am on the bike. So yeah, I'll have to be, yeah, the heart rate's going to be in the red if, if he's teaching on the tread for sure, but very exciting if it, if it turns out to be true. Yeah. And very cool for him to have a different modality. Definitely. All right. So this week we saw the next installment of the approach of the approach Peloton's yoga series drop. And it features the gorgeous Mariana Fernandez entitled Flow to the Finish. So leading, um, basically this program leads members through a yoga for runners program. Uh, we all know that Mariana is a runner as well as a yoga instructor at Peloton. And she's incorporated a one-week program for members to take prior to a race day. So it really is a wonderful way of being able to get your body ready um, with yoga and as being added to the, you know, to the regiment, uh, preparing for a race day. So I did um, take a look at the program and it looks fantastic. Uh, she really put, you know, I've spoken to her about it. She put a lot of effort into the program and um, was excited to be able to launch it and incorporating her love for running into her absolute, um, you know, passion for yoga. Um, it does come with a badge. So it means, uh, I mean, it just wouldn't be a Peloton program if you weren't able to get a badge for it. Um, so you can earn a bronze badge for completing four of the classes, silver for completing six, and a gold badge for completing seven. There are eight classes, though, in the full list that has been dropped. 
Um, if you do want to go ahead and take a look at the full list of classes, just head over to hellobody.com um, where Chris has them outlined. Because as you folks know, when Peloton drops a program, the classes are locked and only available as you progress through the, through the actual program. So if you're curious to see what they are or you'd like to jump ahead, you're able to link into them from hellobuddy.com and Chris has it on there. So from what I'm understanding, people are really into it. I mean, there's so many races coming up. I guess this is really race season, you know, the end of September through the end of November. With New York Marathon, uh, Boston Marathon, I think, is coming up too. Um, there's certainly the DC uh, Marine Corps. There's tons of things as well as all the UK. I mean, the London Marathons, the big in October, the end of October. Mm. So there's lots coming up and it's a nice way for people to marry the two and utilize the benefit of yoga together with the training of running. Yep, nice. Well, we have uh, Latin, Latinx Heritage Month uh, that was just announced. So Peloton announced the 2022 Latinx and Hispanic Heritage Month celebration and the initial class lineup this past Wednesday uh, via Instagram stories. So um, it's celebrated from September 15th through October 15th. Um, it has been a tradition at Peloton since 2018. And you can see uh, Peloton's announcement from last year on pelobuddy.com that we have linked there, which includes 13 classes. And um, we also have the previous uh, 2020s announcement, which included a J Balvin artist series, uh, a special apparel collaboration and some more and since 2020 peloton's tradition uh, to honor the month has been to donate to the hispanic scholarship fund which the company announced it will continue this year as well and if you're wondering um and, and it's being referred to as lhhm classes on the peloton schedule this is peloton's abbreviation for latinx and hispanic heritage month um, there's usually at least one featured artist series associated with the celebration, um, which we did get recently with, you know, you've got that next, uh, you're covering that story with the Gloria Estefan. Um, but there's a, yeah. a bunch of classes um, that we have all linked on pillowbuddy.com. Uh, but there's a celebration run with Bex, a ride with Jess King, a yoga flow with Mariana, uh, that, uh, that are both in Spanish. She also has a meditation that's in Spanish as well. A full body strength with rad that's also in Spanish. And on arms and shoulders, that's 20 minutes with tune day. And a ride with Hannah and Robin, Hannah Corbin. Uh, but a bunch of, um, bunch of different mo modalities are all covered for the most part. Um, and obviously you can expect to receive a badge for completing any of the 2022 classes and we also have a nice list of all previous badges uh on pelobuddy.com if you want to look at the nice little display that we have there of them yeah so it looks like that you're absolutely right the peloton timed it well with their next artist series drop um and as you said it's featuring none other than gloria estefan and as we know, um, Gloria is a Cuban-American singer, actor, seven-time Grammy Award winner, and a recipient of an American Music Award for Lifetime Achievements. She is going to kick off Latinx and Hispanic Heritage Month, um, which was just this past Friday. So the series dropped um, on Friday, um, and it was shared on Peloton socials, as we all know, back on Wednesday. The series did include uh, across six modalities with eight instructors and, as you said, three languages. So, you know, combining into the Heritage Month celebration, um, they went all out. So five of the classes were live, while three others were dropped on demand. And I was lucky enough, hence wanting to take the story, was lucky enough to do a the Gloria Estefan walk live in studio with Jess King this past Friday. So it was at 5 p.m. 
And uh, you can just imagine, I mean, what an amazing, amazing <laughs> experience uh, being able to do the artist series. Um, yeah, Robin Arzan had a 30-minute live with members right also on Friday. That was at 5.30. Ross Rayburn did a yoga flow on Saturday morning. And Marcel uh, Marr had a run in German. Um, today, Sunday, Mariana gets to flow live with members in studio as well. And that was a Spanish yoga flow um, to this Gloria Estefan's music. So a fun artist series for sure. Her music is, you know, being down in Miami more, you know, I get to listen to reggaeton, uh, you know, uh, Mexican music, Hispanic music, and, and it's fantastic. I'm totally, I mean, if you come to my apartment, that is all that is playing on the sodas. You will only listen to, um, you know, Latinx uh, music. So it's fun. Nice. It's very fun. Well, we also have a fall boot camp challenge now that is going on. It's running from September 12th through the 10th of October. You can receive gold if you complete eight or more boot camp workouts or a silver if you do six boot camps and bronze will uh you'll get bronze if you do four boot camp workouts and um with that um there are no live classes uh from london or the new york studios on monday the 19th and tuesday the 20th and as of recording there's been no official reason given, but everything is shut down in London for the Queen Elizabeth's funeral on the 19th. So I'm not really sure if New York is just closing uh, out of respect for that or. Uh, or maybe they're just preparing for Wednesday, the 21st of September. They just need to all know that they're sure that, you know, Seglo 3 will get a shot. Back to Amanda. Back. <laughs> <laughs> You're you're the type you're yeah. the type that celebrates your birthday the entire month, aren't you? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you're lucky it's just the whole month. And God, like, it's good because it's like the 21st gives me those three weeks before and you know a couple of days after. Uh, it's fantastic. Your poor husband. <laughs> your poor husband. <laughs> my poor husband. Believe you me. Believe you me. Um, all right. So changing changing gears just a little bit for those of you. And we're hoping and praying for those 6 a.m. Uh, 6 a.m. Eastern Time live classes to come back onto the schedule. It doesn't look like they're coming back onto the schedule anytime soon. So Peloton had shared in comments on the official Facebook member page that they aren't coming back anytime soon. And there are some very, very disappointed members. There was... 6 a.m. I think they call the 6 a.m. hitters that would be yeah. up and doing their you know modalities, whether it would be an Ali Love, Ali Love ride or a Matt Wolfers run. Or there were definitely specific early morning instructors that would do classes, and people are upset. I was just so I, don't I was just starting to get into the 6 a.m. Monday morning classes with Camilla because she took over that time slot from. Uh, Olivia some time ago. I guess Olivia finally got rid of that time slot and, and gave it to the, you know, the newbie instructor. Um, but maybe they should, maybe they should do a, a live class from London that would make it 6 a.m. Eastern time. So we could still get some 6 a.m. even though it's from London, you know, cause otherwise you got to get up at three fifty five a.m. or 4 a.m. whenever, they're doing some live classes uh, from the London studio or two thirty. Yeah, that's way too early. But um, they could do they could work it that way, and then everyone would be happy. So yeah, well, it should be eleven a.m. I mean, it's eleven a.m. UK time. So yeah, I don't know why it wouldn't be an option. Um, Just yeah, gotta finagle the the schedule a little bit. I know a lot of they would make a lot of people happy. So especially on the East Coast. Exactly. Um, well, moving on. So Peloton has officially rolled out their bike program now nationwide. And um, now through the month-to-month -month rental offering, members, we've, we've talked about the one Peloton rental club in the past, uh, but now members will have unlimited access to Peloton's entire library of, of live and on-demand classes. It's 
$89 a month for the original Peloton bike. And this includes the monthly subscription. So it's all packaged into one monthly price. Um, and now anyone can access this program at onepeloton.com forward slash bike forward slash rentals. And there are free returns at any time. Um, and program participants can choose to continue renting indefinitely, or they can choose to buy the bike or the bike plus at any time during their rental period. Uh, but the current rental pricing um, is as follows. So for the for the original bike and the all access membership, like I said, it's $89 a month plus a one time $150 setup fee. Um, and then $895 to purchase it after 12 months of renting. Uh, the bike plus is obviously a little more because it's a little more expensive. Uh, that's $119 a month. Uh, and the same $150 setup fee. And then to purchase it, it's $1,595, $1,595 to purchase it after 12 months. Um, and this, there is a little disclosure, purchase price may vary based on when customers choose to buy out their bike or bike plus, because obviously if you've made more payments towards it, that'll fluctuate. All right. Well, they also announced that they are offering discounted pricing on hardware to members of their corporate wellness program. So they really have been pushing that as well as United Healthcare Insurance members who have that eligible plan. So not all United Healthcare members do get the ability to utilize the Peloton Corporate Wellness Program, but those that do have the eligible plan. It seems that members have been um, reported receiving emails from Peloton specifically marketing the fact that they recently raised the price of the Bike Plus and the Tread, but those folks that are in the Corporate Wellness Program can get discounts um, to not pay the new higher prices. And from what we are understanding, um, the prices are even lower than what they were before last month's increase. So if you are part of a corporate wellness program, you know, through Peloton, wow. I mean, that's pretty cool that you're able to get the hardware significantly discounted. Um, so if anyone knows, I'd love to get comments of who, who's been part who's of been, that and who's actually you can yeah. that benefit. Um, so this, this next story is for our friends down under in Australia. So listen up. Uh, Peloton is partnering with the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, also known as CBA, to offer cashback rewards to cardholders on select Peloton purchases. So uh, Peloton shared the details via a new support page, which we have on pelobuddy.com if you want to get more detail. Uh, but from September 8th to October 16th, Pel CBA is running an offer where eligible CBA cardholders can receive $350 cash back on select Peloton purchases. Eligible, ed, eligible members with a CBA-linked MasterCard who spend at least $2,000 with Peloton in a single transaction online at onepeloton.com.au or in-store can receive the cashback bonus. So if you have been on the sidelines waiting to pull the trigger on the tread, is the tread available in Australia? No. Um, on the bike, no. now's your chance. Yeah. All right, and for the Brits, they were certainly disappointed that the Ulta cycling shoes weren't available when we were offered them about nine months ago, uh, uh, back then, but now they can. Now they can get them. So Peloton has just announced that the shoes will be available through the website in the UK. They are priced at £130, so they're £10 more expensive than the, than the regular Peloton shoes. Um, and they can be bought, um, as I said, via the website. They haven't shared any news about when the shoes may become available, though, in Germany or Australia. So I always feel like those markets tend to get a little forgotten, but um, they are now available in the UK, which I'm assuming, um, you know, folks are able to go ahead and, and purchase those. 
Um, but as a reminder, there are a couple noticeable differences between the Ulta cycling shoes and Peloton standard cycling shoes. Instead of the um, clip on the standard shoes, the Ulta uses a single Velcro strap mm. that secures the shoe to the foot. So for those of you that used to get so frustrated um, with, you know, with that clip and having to put it in, it's now just a Velcro strip, which really is actually cool. I do have the shoes and they are nice. Um, they also have more mesh, like a more mesh sock-like fitting. Um, more that ventilated. That hard exterior. Yeah. More ventilated, yeah, that the standard shoes have. Both shoes include the cleats um, with purchase. And they have the three bolt um, mount system for attaching those delta cleats, cleats yeah, um, and delta cleats. And, and as we know, the bike and the bike plus are equipped with those um, pedals, delta pedals. Yep. Um, yeah, I hear the so I hear the, the, hear the new shoes. Felt left out. I hear the new shoes just yeah. aren't as supportive because of all that mesh. You don't feel like you're. I, I guess you, there's more wiggle room. I love them. They feel great initially. I love them initially. My feet actually numb in them. Yeah. So when I wear them, my foot actually goes numb. That's weird. So I've gone back to using my regular ones. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, see, uh, um, I, like, I like the original. I, I like the original. Yeah. See, I, I have the original, but I have the original white Peloton shoes with the uh, orange oh, accents. Yes, yeah. Yes. Which, was a, uh, which was a lucky score on the JSS Tribe page that someone was selling brand new. Um, yeah, I love I love my OG whites as as some people refer to them. And they're and they're yeah. very supportive. I have the Nike ones. I have the Nike and I the like super those. reps. I keep, those, I keep those the super That's what Jackie in my, in That's what Jackie wears and she likes them. But they seem more me- they seem way more meshy like the Altos. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Not quite as bad. They're not quite as bad not having them. Okay. Yeah, and I guess, John, that pretty much wraps up the news. Yeah. Next up is our instructor in the news, and I'll let you go first. Yeah, first up, uh, adaptive strength trainer Logan Aldridge. He was uh, the recent host of the Runway of Dreams fashion show in New York. Um, this company, the Runway of Dreams, their mission is founded on the basis that clothing is a basic human need. And they empower people with disabilities, with confidence and self-expression through fashion and beauty inclusion. Um, So there were people uh, going down the runway that were in wheelchairs. They had um, walkers, um, all all types of folks with disabilities that were um, walking, doing the catwalk. Um, and it looked like it was a great turnout. There was lots of Peloton instructors in attendance, including Dennis, Jess Sims, Kirsten, Callie, Aditi, and your your pal Mariana. Um, so it looked like a great time for a great cause that obviously Logan is very passionate about being, um, you know, an adaptive strength trainer himself. And um uh, it was just great seeing all the, you know, he was walking the the red carpet, taking pictures with Peloton instructors. There's another folks in attendance that were participating in the show. It was fantastic to see. Amazing. Yeah. And another buddy, Jeffrey McKeachin, was back in Germany uh, for personal time and decided to do a meet and greet in the Berlin store, one of the Berlin stores. So he was out there. He had announced it on his social media. I didn't get a follow-up to hear how many folks had come along. But what a cool thing. And I miss those meet and yeah. And I think they're such a fantastic way of people to get to interact with the coaches, with the instructors. So that's something I think certainly for the German coaches, that would be an amazing way to continue to promote them and get them out there. Because when you get to meet them, you do realize how fantastic they really are. So um, I'm sure Jeffrey had a ton of fun in Berlin. Yeah, and um, moving on, uh, Christine Dierkel, uh, we had an update about her injury um, that she's been recovering from uh, recently, of her the bike injury that she had. So she posted on Instagram this past week, uh, and it looks like she, you know, damaged a bunch of stuff, but she fractured her collarbone, her second and third ribs, 
uh, her scapula in two spots. And she went, she went on to say that sitting up and laying down have been very challenging, but uh, it's been getting better over time. She said the road rash on her right thigh is almost completely healed, but she described it as being the length of two iPhones. So it was obviously a big patch on her leg there. Yeah. Um, it's almost completely healed in 10 days, though. Uh, she had a partial collapsed lung uh, that she said resolved very quickly and has been helped by the breathing exercises that she's been doing. And she said she's optimistic it won't be too much longer until she returns. Um, and she has some doctor's appointments in the coming week to check on the status of her healing. Uh, but yeah, I, I had noticed some pictures. You know, she had um, wearing an arm brace, obviously, for the collarbone. Um, but she's still, you know, she's doing home, she's still trying to do what she can around the house with her, you know, different projects at their home in Pennsylvania, you know, staining chairs that she recently bought on Facebook Marketplace. So it's definitely not keeping her down. So um, speedy recovery. Yeah, I'm just the most sad for her. I'm just most sad that she wasn't able to compete because I know that she was definitely looking forward to that and probably had been training really hard. So yeah. I was sad that she wasn't able to um, to compete. But yeah. Wishing her, wishing her well. And then your boo, Rebecca Kennedy, she was featured on a podcast, Dr. Will Cole, um, entitled Cardio or Strength T Training, Core Exercise Myth, and How Much Should You Be Working Out? Um, in all transparency, I have not had an opportunity to listen to it yet. But uh, Rebecca basically came on um, talking about her own journey with fitness. Um, you know, we learned why daily movement is so important, how one should listen to their body, um, and why it's essential to give oneself grace through the process. So she's a huge advocate for that, as we know. And um, I'm sure this one would have been a really good, um, you know, good episode or at least podcast to listen to um on my drive back from new york it is going to be playing in the background so i will definitely um listen to that for sure well while we're on the subject of podcasts and if you haven't listened to this one you can add it to your to your drive your your commute back to to and from new york city uh but ben aldis he was recently a guest on the that peter crouch podcast to give fitness advice I did not have a chance to listen to it either. It's about 30 minutes, uh, but it's on Spotify, and I'm sure we have it linked on PelloBuddy.com if you want to check it out there. So actually, interestingly enough, I did listen <laughs> to it. Uh, ben actually, it was so funny. I don't know how I, I got the, we got those mixed up. I should have probably taken yeah. that one. I did listen to it. It was a great podcast. Um, he... Um, was really on only at the, in the last maybe 12 minutes uh, of the okay. podcast. So the first part of it, um, they had another guest. a wrestler. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they had another guest and Ben came on at the end. Gotcha. Um, they're a funny duo. The, the, the host. The host was a, had somebody else on as well. I can't remember who the, who the third person was, but he's, they're really funny. Um, and Ben did an amazing job. So I was really proud of them. And talking about Ben... There's a new pillow pop in the family. <laughs> ben and Leanne introduced us to Jags. And I know for certainly for me, who, you know, just adores both of them and have seen, you know, Leanne struggles over the last few months with losing her best friend. This was something that she really needed in her life. And we were so thrilled. She is besotted, absolutely besotted. Jags is gorgeous. And um, I'm so thrilled that something has been able to bring her some happiness and to see her sparkle and smile has just been amazing. So she is um, going to be an amazing pedo mom, I mean, uh, pedo pop mom, I should say. <laughs> and she's joining the ranks of all the others. I mean, it seems to be the thing to do if you're a Peloton instructor, get a dog or get a cat. It's super. <laughs> Mostly dogs. I think they have a it's super cute, is it? Uh, is he a lab lab mix? It's a she. Oh, it's, it's a, a she. she. Oh, it's a she. Um, and it is. Do I know what it is? I can't remember if they she. if they said the breed. I remember asking? Yeah, I don't think they did. Okay. Um, I don't think they did say what it was. Looks like it could be a a, a lab lab mix. Yeah. At. 
Super uh, cute. Yeah, lab mix. Her mom, her mom has one uh, chocolate. I think her mom has a chocolate lab. Sue has a, a chocolate lab, so it may be from similar, you know, similar breed. Um, but yeah, it was very sweet to see. Great. And rounding out the instructor in the news, a very happy birthday to Anna Greenberg, who celebrated her birthday on Sunday. Yeah, and actually, now we have one more little bit. We have some anniversaries this past. Thursday and Friday were Jermaine Johnson and Susie Chan's one-year anniversary. So Jermaine celebrated on Thursday and um, Susie celebrated on Friday. Is that one year? Congrats to them for an, one year. Is that I one year like from their first class that they taught or from their launch class. date? Okay. Yes. Gotcha. One year from the, yep, um, uh, Susie's class was on the 16th. Um, and Jermaine's was on the 15th, I believe. So, yeah, really exciting for them. And um, I, I have to tell you, it feels like they've been on the platform forever. So I couldn't actually believe it. I had to go back and like, check that it was only a year and that it wasn't two years. But I guess it's, it's flown by. a pretty quick year. Yeah. Pretty quick year. And, yeah, John, I think let's go right into our picks of the week. I don't believe we have many this week, but we'll go ahead and share them with you folks anyway. All right. So do you want to go ahead and head it off? Yes, I will take – sorry, I was refreshing my screen here to see if we had names assigned, but I will t uh, kick off the first – I'll take the first couple. So first up is Camilla Ramone's 45 Hidden Hills ride from – the 9th of September, we got this one from several members. Uh, RX Spin Girl 629, I Sweat with Swag, I Sweat Swagger, uh, Lori K. Kavan, and Spin for Spritz. They said, superb energy, challenging class, and playlist that gave me all the feels. And then next up, uh, another ride from Robin Arzon, 30-Minute Hip Hop, also from the 9th. This one was submitted by Like Lawrence a lot. And she said, great music, nice climbs. All right. And then Bex Gentry had a 30-Minute Walk Plus Run, also from the 9th at 2.30 p.m. Lisa Marie, MPLS, said she gave insight into training with Ashton. That was kind of cool. And Jess King had her sweat steady ride on the 10th. It was a 30-minute class, and she got uh, picked by Tiffany MV, MMC, Feely89, and Weston the Cat. They said playlist and energy were both great. And next up, Jen Sherman's 60-minute classic rock ride. I took this one live. It was on the morning of September 11th. And we got this one from Rachel Spins, 24, and Noah Smolsky, 71. They said, had an awesome playlist, and Jen was fabulous. I concur. There, Rebecca's uh, RK's 30-minute hike, also from September the 11th, submitted by J.K. Pellows for Treats. They said, amazing energy and playlist, hikes becoming my new favorite workout by far. Agree. I missed that one and I can't wait to take it. I absolutely love her hikes. Uh, so definitely want to do that one. Um, all right. We got from Jason D and Andy Botticelli, Callie Gullickson's 30-minute bike boot camp. It was an upper body workout uh, from the 11th. Um, they said great segments and awesome three-by-three three circuit with one dumbbell to start with an overhead press. Then added two dumbbells to do one bicep, <laughs> one bicep curl at a time. Wow, there was a lot of description in this <laughs> and why they liked it. Very detailed. Um, also included, very detailed, also included a short AMRAP of chest flies and overhead tricep extensions and traveling push-ups without weights to finish floor segment. Pally gave awesome directions like all. And then Bradley Rose had a 30-minute intervals and arms from the 12th. Um, five boys of mine recommended this one and said, quiet and calming, yet still tough. All right. And Kendall Tools, 45-minute 2000s ride from September 12th, submitted by Jessie Doyle. She said, what a throwback and great playlist as usual. 
And then next up was Andy Spears' 30 minute hit tread boot camp, which was from September 12th as well. Uh, Cardio Ninja and Lady J71 gave us this recommendation. They said, good variation uh, from the same 30 minute boot camp format. I was in this one live and on a personal note, I was completely sidetracked and consumed with trying to book classes on the studio, <laughs> which is the first time that I've attempted now to try to, to book a weekend of classes since the studios yes. opened and it was a, it was a mess. I was so like frustrated. I, I immediately went to the Cody ride cause I knew that that's what would fill up first. And I was getting like this error message, like, um, you know, go back, retry. Then it would say it was like everything all of a sudden was just full or waitlisted immediately. So I was like, I just I threw my hands up. I was like, I'm not wasting. So I, I felt so defeated. And then that, it was just it totally took me. It totally took me out of the the being in the boot camp. Um, totally took me out of the moment. So That's a shame. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to do this. I don't know how folks are getting into classes. I agree. I mean, I went to look. I, I wasn't going to be, I have a wedding that weekend, so I wasn't going to be, you know, taking any classes. But I always like to look and see what was, you know, what was offered. And it, it amazed me how quickly the U.S. classes filled up. I mean, within minutes, within minutes. So I'm not sure how they're yeah. going to, you know, who's getting into these classes? Like, who are the people that are able to, you know, get in so quickly and get in for so many? It's crazy. I'm just. Um, that was something that was surprised as well, surprising as well. Yeah. Hopefully things die down yeah. in the coming months and it's not uh, such an insane rush. Uh, I mean, it's like, it's like, Dude. you know, trying to get tickets, you know, like Lady Gaga tickets, you know, right when they go on sale on Ticketmaster, it's such a frenzy. Yeah, oh. but but what, but the thing is that there's so many classes, so that's why I'm so surprised that folks could have gotten into more than one class. Because if you can't get into just one class, yeah, how are folks getting into you know two or three or four over the weekend? So um, well, I'd love to get to the, to I, the bottom of. That. I probably could have gotten into some of the other modalities, but you know, if I'm going to fly out from Michigan, like I I. I want to ride, you know, with my number ones, which is Jen and Cody. Like, I don't want to just be able to get in for one class. 100%. Like, I, I want to get in for three or four, you know, in the day. I, I really want to make a, you know, a weekend of it. Um, of course. So, my own okay. selfish reasons. But, yeah, I'm just going right. to wait. Wait it out. And hopefully it isn't. Wait it out. Yeah, hopefully the well, I'll go ahead demand and dies and down. I'll go ahead and round out. I'll go ahead and round out the rest of the picks. So, Alex... Alex's 30-minute Our Future Selves with Ashton Kutcher and Chris Paul was a pick of the week by Smith22C. They said, Alex Toussaint on the tread, need I say more? So that's awesome. And then Mariana's five-minute intro to yoga for runners program was recommended by Yogi for Life. They said her new program is great. And this first class in the program gives a good intro of what to expect. And then lastly was my pick of the week, together with fries before guys. I did have to add this one at the last minute because it was absolutely fantastic. So it was Susie Chan, Chan's 20-minute classical walk. It was from the 13th. Uh, fries before guys said it was great for recovery day and I concur. I wanted just an easy day on Thursday. I was going into the studio on Friday. My legs were already tired from the run the day before. And um, I thought it was amazing. It was kind of in honor of Queen Elizabeth II. Mm. So she wanted to do it more low key. And, you know, Susie knows, I've, I've chatted with her about this before. She intimidates me on the running, on the running platform. <laughs> so if there's a good walk on there, then I love to be able to jump on any of her walks because I feel they're more manageable just for my level. Yeah, I'm the same way. Expertise. And yeah, and it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So if you haven't done that, the music was beautiful. Loved her. She, you know, she really just let us go with the flow. Um, and that was when I used my auto follow on the resistance and it worked beautifully. She did do a couple climbs, so a couple of mics um, up the, up the um, incline. 
So yeah, so folks, that wraps up the picks of the week, wraps up the show. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to listen or watch. We hope you, we have enlightened you on lots of stories this week. It just kind of kept on adding and adding and adding as the week progressed. So um, thank you so much for taking the time to listen. And as John said at the beginning, please share with us if there's stuff you'd like to hear, if there's stuff we're not doing, you'd like for us to do. It's always nice for us to be able to get that feedback um, from you guys. We certainly enjoy doing it for you. And um, I'm appreciative that you listen. So from me here, um, bye for now, everybody. Yep, and from me here in Michigan. Thank you for tuning in for another ad-free episode and look forward to bringing you our Century episode next week. And as always, we will see you on the leaderboard. Thank you for watching Pillow Buddy TV, your source for everything Peloton, by the community, for the community. Work out with us using the Pillow Buddy TV leaderboard tag and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pillow Buddy. Don't forget that we have a podcast available so that you can listen to us while on the move. Just search for Pillow Buddy TV on any major platform and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.